hello hello gorgeous people welcome back to my channel so this video is a compilation of all the pasta recipes i have shared in this channel and the bonus recipe of my banana oats muffin sugarless now let's start with chicken spaghetti in truffle oil the ingredients are garlic onion sliced button mushroom cherry tomatoes cut into two cooking cream grated parmesan shredded chicken spaghetti noodles and of course truffle oil i have also used fresh basil for this recipe para mas um mabigyan ng emphasis yung flavor so as per chef gordon ramsay my favorite chef no nakausap kami charot so tulungan ni chef gordon seryoso to ha Turo ni Chef Gordon, kapag kagagamit ka ng mga fresh herbs, kailangan um, pagpatung-patungin mo sila and then roll it and then chop it together. The reason is, kapag nirol mo kasi siya, mas lumalabas yung flavor ng herb. Yes guys, totoo yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Na-meet ko na in person si Chef Gordon. And talagang sobrang amazing yung feeling na hindi ko ma-explain na naiiyak ako na na papawisan, na naiiyak, na hindi ko alam. Kasi sobrang, alam mo yung feeling na na-meet mo yung super idol mo na personality. Ganun. So, syempre, um, as a fan, talagang marami ako mga pinapanood na tutorials niya. And may mga cookbooks din niya ako na binabasa ko. So, whatever I'm learning, sinishare ko dito sa channel ko. Of course, I will be sharing my full Chef Gordon Ramsay experience sa mga coming vlogs ko. So, watch out for it, guys! So, for this pasta, the perfect pan to use for me, ha? Opinion ko lang is the All Clad D3 Weeknight Pan with Lead. O, di ba? Maiyabang ko lang yung All Clad ko. Sorry! <laughs> Permission to brag. <laughs> Ayun na nga, napainit na natin yung pan and it's time for us to put the truffle oil. Since in truffle oil ang ating recipe ngayon. Um, just a little amount of truffle oil. Kasi mamaya magdadagdag pa tayo ng truffle oil. So, konti lang muna. So, now the usual. We'll put the onion. Tapos, hanggang maging translucent na siya. So again, you will ask, bakit kailangan onion? Kasi ang garlic, mas madaling maluto. So uunahin natin yung onion. Alam nyo guys, nung bata ako, ito yung pinaka-paborito kong um, ginagawa. Yung nagsistart yung, yung gisa. Diyan ako nag-start paano ma ma fall in love sa pagluluto. Hininaan ko na yung temperature ng, ng stove kasi pinainit ko lang naman yung pan kanina kaya medyo mataas yung nag-start. Then we will add the garlic. I added a little bit of extra virgin olive oil kasi medyo natutuyo na. Now we will add the mushroom. The last time na nagluto ako ng pasta, sabi ko sa inyo, last na ilalagay yung mushroom kapag nagigisa kasi nagpo-produce siya ng water. But this time, unahin natin yung mushroom since hindi naman ako magigisa ngayon eh. I mean, yung mushroom lang talaga yung pinaka main ingredient. And yung chicken, yung shredded chicken na ilalagay natin is na boil na. So, basically, wala na masyadong gisa na mangyayari. So, now, pwedeng yung mushroom yung unahin natin ilagay. 
At this point, kailangan natin magdagdag ng extra virgin olive oil. Konti lang naman, para lang magkaroon uli ng moisture kasi yung um, truffle oil kanina, madali siya na-absorb eh kapag uh, niluluto. Ginawa ko lang siya kanina para yung oil ma-absorb kagad ng mga flavor na ginigisa natin. Then later, magdadagdag uli tayo ng truffle oil kapag patapos na yung niluluto natin. So, ayan na nga. Now, it's time for us to add the boiled shredded chicken. So, this time, lalagyan mo na siya ng um, pepper and a little bit of salt. So, depende sa'yo. For me, pepper lang kasi yung cheese, medyo salty na siya. So, like what I always say, konti-konti lang yung inalagay natin na salt and pepper. Parang layering lang siya. Kasi pag nasobra na kagad ang alat, mahirap nang i-adjust. Now it's time to add the cherry tomatoes. Yan, yung cherry tomatoes, kinat ko lang siya into two. Now if you will ask, bakit cherry tomato? Kasi ang cherry tomato mas Crispy. Crispy. Mas crunchy, I mean. By this time, we need to lower down the heat. Kasi yung mga remaining ingredients na inalagay natin, hindi na kailangan ng sobrang heat. In sobrang taas na temperature. And syempre, ayaw natin na masunog or ma-overcook yung cream. I added um, cooking cream in this recipe kasi nga, sabi ko, creamy spaghetti. Pero actually, pwedeng wag nyo nang lagyan ng cream. If you prefer a lighter pasta, you can skip out the cooking cream. Pero for this recipe, nilagyan ko lang siya ng cooking cream and some cheeses mamaya. But totally, pwede na yan actually as it is. No cream, no cheese, yun. And as I always say, yung tip ko lagi sa inyo, pag magluluto ng pasta, magtatabi kayo ng a cup of the pasta water kasi yun yung gagamitin natin na pang-add if you want more sauce. But if you have white wine, now is the perfect time to add a bit of white wine. And then add more pepper. As you can see, nililayer ko yung paglagay ng pepper and hindi na masyado salt kasi later on, madaming cheese akong ilalagay. So, hayaan nyo lang na medyo mag-thick yung sauce and then later on, yung pasta na inalagay natin. Now, we will add the cooked pasta. Actually, yung pasta na yan, hindi siya masyadong cooked as per sa instruction nung label. Kasi nga, inimix ko pa siya sa sauce and makukontinue pa yung pagluto niya. So, make sure na hindi pa lutong-luto yung pasta na gagamitin nyo. But, if you are making the um, pasta yung kanina, yung wala ng cooking cream, wala ng added cheese, pwede nyo nang wag ihalo yung pasta noodles. Pwede nang i-plate nyo na yung noodles and then ilagay nyo na yung mushroom and chicken and the truffle oil. Just add more truffle oil na lang. So, ito na ang ating mga cheese. Grated Parmesan. Damihan natin na. Masarap yan eh. Ay, 
Alam nyo guys, pasta is really my favorite food. I can eat it every day, so I really take pasta seriously. Not to brag or anything, pero masarap talaga akong gumawa ng pasta. I think so. Actually, I believe so. Ang yabang ng dating, but really, I take pride on my pasta. And then, we will add some uh, basil, yung nagtira ko kanina nang hindi ko sinap. So, yan, para lang may arte-arte, ganyan. And, magtira rin kayo mamaya for plating. And then, I realized ko, since I'm making this pasta creamy, I decided to add two different kinds of cheese. One is the sliced cheese. At this point, hinaan ko uli yung temperature ng stove. And the other one is cream cheese. Who doesn't love cheese anyway? So, more cheese, more masarap. So, basically, lahat na ng cheese sa fridge, nilabas ko na. Ayan na, ang creamy na niya, di ba? Super sarap, grabe. Haluin lang natin siyang mabuti para ma evenly distribute yung mga cheese and medyo mag-melt na din yung cheese. Of course, I added chili flakes kasi gusto ko may konting kick ng anghang sa pasta ko. And for the final touch, of course, we will have to add the truffle oil. Hanggang truffle oil muna ako kasi ang mahal ng totoong truffle eh. <laughs> the truffle oil will give an extra earthy flavor na parang garlicky. Ganon. So there. Our creamy chicken spaghetti with truffle oil. Sobrang dali lang, di ba? This recipe is actually good for yung mga bigla ang dinner, bigla ang may bisita, ganyan. I hope you can try my recipe. And please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll get notified whenever I upload new videos like this. Mga gorgeous people, please share this video so you can help me reach my 600 subscribers. Always remember guys, just cook it. And now for all my pescatarian friends, this is my seafood pasta recipe. Linguini frutti de mare. Ano nga ba ang frutti de mare? Well, in Italian, ang literal translation niyan is fruit of the sea. Hence, seafood pasta. So, in other words, pinasosyal lang. Para kunyari, magandang pakinggan. Charot! For this type of sauce, ang ginagamit ko talaga is linguini. Kasi feeling ko perfect siya for the ingredients na ginagamit. For the ingredients, we will need lemon juice and lemon zest. Fresh tomatoes and canned chopped tomatoes. Actually, mas preferred talaga yung fresh tomatoes. Kaya lang, nakulangan ako. So, buti na lang, andyan ang canned tomato. This is my original recipe and I want to feature my friends Chibog's premium chili garlic sauce in spicy and normal. I will also be using Parmigiano Reggiano which means the cheese is aged minimum of 12 months. We will also need parsley and of course the frutti de mare, shrimps, squids, and clams. Clums must be soaked in salted water for a minimum of 2 hours. Parang gikisingin muna natin sila. Kala mo natulog? Charot! So now we have to cut a squid in a shape of a ring. Para kang gagawa ng kalamari. Sorry naman sa blocking ng kamay ko. Ang giant niya. Kasing giant ng squid. Well, I got this squid and the clums from Weimart. Usually, dun ka talaga makakabila ng magagandang seafoods like lobsters, king crabs, um, clams, and everything. Of course, we will also need garlic and onion. Ewan ko ba, bakit kaya laging may garlic and onion kapag maluluto? 
comment down below if you know the answer. <laughs> so, yung shrimp natin dapat nabanatan na siya. And then, iseparate niya yung ulo para doon tayo kukuha ng pampalasa. So, ayan yung ulo niya. Lagyan lang ng hot water. And then, kukunin natin ang kanyang katas. While doing this, kailangan nagpapakuno na rin kayo ng water para doon natin iluluto ang pasta. So, ayan. Kumukuno na siya. Now, we have to put a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil and salt. Ako, I always follow kung ilang minutes yung nakalagay dun sa packaging ng pasta because it is there for a reason. Bawat pasta kasi was made differently. So, kailangan talaga sinusurot natin siya. One of the techniques na natutunan ko while I was working in a hotel, kailangan ng pasta ganyan ilalagay. In the middle and let it be. Yan. Yan ang proper way daw. Sabi ng mga chefs na nakausap ko. So, ang pasta kasi, kailangan talaga al dente. Kahit anong sarap ng sauce, pag ang pasta malabsa, fail talaga. You might be wondering bakit brown yung color ng pasta ko. Well, I got this linguine pasta in Italy. Organic siya. So, parang kunyari sa shell. Charot! Italy restaurant ha, not Italy the country. <laughs> I wish I can go back there. Alam nyo, Italian food is one of my favorite food talaga. Kaya nung nagpunta ako sa Florence, sa Rome, at saka sa Venice, talagang ang ah, saya-saya ko talaga. Ang lakas makahapi lahat ng pizza and pasta na nakain ko doon. Gosh! At dahil favorite ko ang pasta, talagang minaster ko kung paano magluto ng pasta. As you can see, al dente na yung pasta. Usually, it should be drained and ice cold bath with oil. Pero gagamitin ko pa siya mamaya. So, sinet aside ko lang muna siya. Pero tinanggal ko na siya sa water para maghinto na yung pagluto niya. Now, in a wok, gagawin na natin yung pasta sauce. So, heat the pan and then add extra virgin olive oil. Then, igigisa na natin yung onion and garlic. Kapag medyo translucent na yung onion, then that's the time na inalagay na natin yung garlic. Bakit na una ang onion? Kasi mas mabilis maluto ang garlic. So, ayaw natin na masusunog yung garlic. Then, after few minutes, add na natin yung fresh tomatoes. As you can see, bitay lang aking fresh tomatoes. Kaya, to the rescue, ang canned tomatoes. I was not able to include in the shoot, pero nailagay ko na yung canned tomatoes. Then, ilalagyan natin siya ng konting water. That water was used in boiling the pasta. The reason kung bakit yan ang kinamit ko, para medyo starchy na siya ng konti. Now, it's time to add the clams. Clams muna kasi mas kailangan siyang iluto compared dun sa other seafood natin. After around 10 minutes, medyo magsistart ng mag-open yung clams. That's the sign na malamit na siyang maluto. Now, it's time na medyo i-check nyo kung merong mga clams na hindi nag-open. Kapag hindi nag-open, i-disregard nyo na siya. It means it's not good to be eaten. Now, ilagay na natin yung kanina na kinuha natin katas from the ulo ng shrimp para pampalasa. Ayan, as you can see nga, medyo nag-open na most of the clams. Then, it's the right time to add the squid. Mabilis na lang yan maluluto, guys. So, onting luto lang and then ilalagay na rin natin yung shrimp. Pag tumagal kasi yung squid na niluluto, nagiging rubbery siya. Ayan, after few minutes, luto na ang clams. Open na open na siya. So, that's the time na iset aside muna natin. On another pan, dito natin gagawin yung pasta at inimix yung seafoods. So, heat the pan and add the chibogs spicy premium chili garlic sauce. Yan. Hindi na ako naglagay ng oil kasi meron na siyang oil na kasama. So, yan na yun. And then, realize ko baka masyado maanghang, dadagdagan ko siya ng chibogs. Plain naman. 
kumihan natin para mas masaya. Actually, I want to thank Monica, my schoolmate from Stella Maris, who was kind enough to send me this chibok's premium chili garlic sauce na business nila all the way from the Philippines. So thank you, man, for bringing. I will link down below their FB page para matryin nyo ang kanilang napakasarap na chibok's chili garlic sauce. Sobrang sarap, guys. Legit. Ang sarap. Actually, kaya ako nag-request niyan na matikman kasi nakukurious ako sa usap-usapan sa group chat namin, sa batch namin na sobrang sarap daw. So, ako naman, si Miss Curious, gusto matikman. Ayan, you can see, nag add ako ng lemon juice. Lemon juice is always nice na i-partner sa mga seafood. Kaya kung napapansin niya, di ba kapag may mga seafood, parang naglalagay sila ng squeeze of lemon juice bago i-serve. Ganyan. Now, kukuha na ako ng mga seafoods na ginawa natin kanina para i-luto ng konti sa chili garlic sauce. Mm -hmm. Ang bango-bango na. If only na aamoy din ninyo. Sobrang nakakagutom na siya. So, ayan. Ilalagay lang natin siya. And then, later on, ilalagay na natin ang parsley and the pasta. Huwag mo na masyadong madaming parsley kasi later, dadagdagan ulit natin siya for the final touches. Pag naubusan kayo ng pasta, don't worry guys, kasi yung ginawa natin kanina na seafoods, pwede nyo ng ulam yun. Masarap higupin sa bao actually, kaya medyo dagdagan nyo rin ng konti yung pasta nyo para hindi naman dry. I mean, dagdagan ng sabaw from the seafood mix na ginawa natin kanina. By this time, kailangan naka-off na yung stove nyo ha, kasi ayaw natin ma-overcook ang mga seafoods. Mukha lang naka-on yung stove pero patay na yan. Parang inuubos ko na lang yung init ng plate. So ayan, mix-mix lang. I'm just making sure na talagang na-mix mabuti para covered yung pasta. Then we will add a zest of lemon. Ginamit ko yung kaninang lemon na pinagkuhanan ko nung juice. Ngayon, yung zest naman niya. Then finally, we will add the parmigiano reggiano. Again, konti lang muna kasi mamaya kasama rin yan sa final touches. Shucks, grabe. Nakakagutom na talaga yung amoy. I'm pretty sure kayo nagkakrave na rin ng pasta. I mean, yan. Now, just add a little bit of salt. Huwag masyadong madami. Konti lang. And pepper. And parsley. Ayan. Luto na ang ating fruity de mare. Now, it's time for the plating. Yun lang talaga ang disadvantage kapag nagsushoot ako ng video. Kasi, imbis nakakain na lang, kailangan pa mag-plate. Kailangan pa ang umarte-arte, chuchu-chuchu. Instead na nagkakain na. So, ayan. Unahin muna natin ang noodles na ilagay. And then, itatop natin siya ng mga seafoods. Akala nyo yan lang, no? Hindi. Isa pa. Siyempre, magpakatotoo na tayo. Please don't forget to comment down below kung anong favorite pasta nyo, ha? Ayan na nga. Pasta. And then, nagyan natin ng shrimp, ng clams. Ilagay na natin ng squid. Lagay na natin lahat. Hayaan nyo na ang presentation basta ang importante masarap. <laughs> and finally, more parmigiano reggiano. Essential na guys ha. Gustong gusto ko yan talaga sinasabi yung parmigiano reggiano. Feeling ko Italian na Italian. Pero parmesan lang naman yan. Parmesan, parmesan. Basta yan yun. And then add more parsley. Akala ko gumanda. Parang kumangit yata. And then add your favorite bread. Parang pumangit. Parang hindi ikinaganda. Sorry guys. So there you go. My original recipe for linguine fruta de mare featuring Chibog's premium chili garlic sauce. I hope you'll try this recipe and you can share it to your loved ones. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you'll get notified whenever I upload new video. Always remember, just cook it. 
and now to all my yellow cob lover friends here is my charny chan this is good replacement for the usual pasta na pwede ihanda during Christmas. This is super easy to make and super budget friendly then. The ingredients we need are chopped onions, minced garlic, sliced shiitake mushroom, sliced chicken breast, of course, salt and pepper. We will need slurry. Ano nga ba ang slurry? Slurry is a mixture of cornstarch and water. Of course, we will need al dente pasta. I use barilla number 5 for pasta. For the sauce, we will need Chinese cooking wine, char shu sauce, hoisin sauce, sesame oil, and dark soy sauce. You will also need salted nuts and spring onions. So now, heat your pan and put on your extra virgin olive oil. And make sure that the surface of the pan is covered with oil. Uy, kanino kayang tender juicy hot dog yung nasa gilid. Now, sweat your onions and then add the garlic. Saute for a few minutes until medyo luto na yung garlic. Now, it's time for us to add the chicken breast. You know, I know a lot of people who doesn't like chicken breast. So, kung ayaw niyo ng chicken breast, go for that chicken thigh, pero bone out. But I will insist to use chicken breast because it's a healthier option. But in life, we all do have a lot of options, options, options. <laughs> Ang corny ko, sorry. So, i-continue niyo lang yung pag -isa. During the process na hindi pa masyado luto yung chicken, I usually add pepper and little salt. Parang nililayer ka yung flavor. Please comment down below your favorite Christmas handa. Ano ang Christmas staple sa inyong menu during Christmas? I mean, apart from queso de bola and fruit salad. As you see, konting salt lang nilagay ko kasi Later, ang gagamitin natin ng nuts is already salted. Sana you'll try this recipe in time for your nacha buena. As I said, this is a great alternative for your usual spaghetti. Now, we have to add in our sesame oil. I put a little sesame oil just to enhance the flavor. And when you put sesame oil, mmm, ang bango bango ng kitchen. Huwag lang tayo masyado ma-excite at maraming inagay kasi kapag sumobra, medyo nag-aamay sunog yung food. Mix lang and then add the Chinese cooking wine. Ngayon, we are starting to build up the flavor of the sauce. Let it cook for a few minutes, then later on, we will start adding on the sauces. Now, we will add about 2 tablespoons of hoisin sauce. You know guys, in cooking, I don't really measure the ingredients, kaya tansya tansya lang. But in baking, you have to be very precise. I will be doing some baking tutorials in the coming videos. Wag mo na ngayon, medyo busy pa si ate. So like what I've said, sa cooking, since madali nang mag-adjust, always start small. Kasi kapag na sobrahan na kagad ang alat, Mahirap na siyang i-adjust. Now, let's add a couple of tablespoons of char shui sauce. What is char shui sauce? Ba'y nakakabulol ha? Well, it gives a barbecue flavor doon sa food and medyo smoky feeling ganun. Masarap siya. This sauce is good for marinating for barbecues or ribs. FYI guys, during the whole process of this recipe, nag-add pa ako ng mga 2 tablespoons ng char shui, ng sesame oil and hoisin sauce. Then, let's add the oyster sauce. Mix together until well combined. Okay lang magmukha siyang maputla pa for now because later on, we will be adding the dark soy sauce. Yun yung magbibigay ng color. Now, 
na medyo nag-combine na together yung flavor, it's time for us to add very little dark soy sauce. Always remember, it is called dark soy sauce for a reason. Kaya don't be so overwhelmed na ang dami mong ilalagay. You see, a tablespoon of dark soy sauce goes a long way already. Let it cook for a few minutes, then later on, we will be adding the nuts. That's a cup of salted nuts, but it's up to you guys kung gaano nyo karami gusto. Again, cook for around 5 minutes hanggang sa mapunta lang yung flavor ng nuts dun sa sauce. Now it's time to add in the slurry. Again, wag okay sa paglagay ng slurry. Baka naman sobrang lapot na ng sauce nyo, mukha na siyang paste. Now, once you add the slurry, mix it together para hindi lumpy. I decided to add some chili flakes because I want some kick on my pasta. Now, that is the consistency that I want. Medyo reduced na yung sauce and thick na siya. Now, add in your spring onions. You guys might be wondering, where is the shiitake mushroom? Well, we will be adding that later on. I added the shiitake mushrooms at the end because mushrooms has water. It releases water. And kapag nagigisa ka, you don't want water in that, diba? So, yung water na marirelease ngayon ng mushroom, yan yung parang added water dun sa sauce. Pang alis ng onteng alat. Cook this for about 5 to 10 minutes, then you're good to go. By this time, kailangan yung pasta mo ready na. I will teach you how to make a perfect al dente pasta on the next video. Kaloka, maka-perfect si ate. Akala mo, Italian chef talaga. Chef ka te. Now, we will be plating the Charlie Chan. You see all those goodness? Oh my god. Editing this video makes me crave for Charlie Chan. To be honest, mahirap talaga mag-edit ng food videos kasi alam mo yun, bumabalik yung moment ng kumain. Kumain ng recipe na niluto mo. Oh my god. I guarantee you guys, once you try this recipe, you will never go back to the famous Charlie Chan of Yellow Cub. Charot! No, seriously. This is so close to yellow cob, if not better. Trust me. So please try this recipe. Ang dali lang, ba? So there, you now have a very delicious Charlie Chan. I hope you like this video and if you do, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and share this video to your friends and family. Lalo na ngayong Noche Buena. Also, please hit the notification bell so you'll get notified whenever I upload new recipe. And now, for all my Vietnamese food lover friends, and for those who love noodle soup, here is my recipe of pho. Pho is a classic Vietnamese street food which consists of broth, some vegetables, and spices. For spices, we will need star anise, cinnamon sticks, coriander seeds, cloves, and cardamom. For the soup, we will need ginger, onion, and beef stock. Much better if you can do it from scratch. Kaya lang, piglaan lang tong nag ako. So, no time. At kailangan talaga mag-explain ako. <laughs> of course, you will need rice sticks for noodles. For the meat, I used three different cuts of beef. Bone marrow, the meaty bones, and the brisket. Para mas malasa. You will also need madaming pans for this recipe kasi one we will use for um, grilling the onion and the ginger which is the cast iron and then you will also use um, a big pot para magboil no meat and then another pot para naman sa noodles so, in other words, madami yung hugasin after. So, kailangan pag matuluto ka ng ganito, meron ka nang nauto na maghuhugas ng mga pinagamitan. Charot! 
I forgot to mention kanina sa ingredients. For garnish, you will also need bean sprout, red chili, lime, spring onion, cilantro, and pwedeng hoisin sauce and sriracha or tabasco kung gusto mo pa ng mas maanghang. You might be wondering, bakit wala namang ganap habang dada siya ng dada? Ayan, nagpapainit po kasi ako ng pan. Yung cast iron, kailangan mainit na mainit. And then, we will add the onion and ginger without any oil. The other pot naman, nagpapakunglo ako ng water. Actually, boiled water na siya bago ko ilagay sa pot para mas mabilis. Kung mapapansin nyo, iba na po ang aking lutuan. Aming lutuan pala kasi nag-move po kami ng house. Kaya wala akong vlog for a while. This is the first time I'll be cooking pala sa lutuan na ito. Kaya medyo nangangapa pa ako sa temperature. Okay, so no need to peel the skin of the onion. Ganyan lang siya. But make sure it's very clean. Ayan. Magmumukha siyang sunog but actually sinusunog talaga natin siya. Charot! <laughs> no, we are putting colors sa onion and later sa ginger. Kung may oven kayo or broiler, better na to onion na lang siya gawin. As you can see on another pot, boiling na yung water, so that's the time to put our meat. Brisket para sa laman, syempre. And then, these meaty bones. Ayan! Dyan. Dyan tayo kukuha ng lasa. And the bone marrow. Pampabata, you know, the collagen. So, yun na nga. While boiling, huwag din kalimutan na meron tayong minuluto na onion. There, that's the color we want to put sa onion natin and sa ginger. So after nyan, tatanggalin na yung onion and ipapalit ko naman yung ginger. Again, no need to peel off the skin of the ginger. Just make sure that it is washed properly. The reason why we are doing this process is to bring out the flavor of the ginger and the onion. There, so after mga 10 minutes, ganyan na yung look ng beef na pinapakuluan natin. Lumabas na yung parang dumi niya na kailangan natin. It is card later. So, ayan na nga. Medyo okay na rin yung ginger. Now, we have to take it out and then, yung mga spices naman ang ilalagay natin. The reason behind it is again, para ma-release yung flavor ng mga spices. Because, you know, pho is all about the taste of the soup. So, since ang labanan ng pho ay all about the flavor of the soup, yan yung reason kung bakit madaming spices and maraming ganap. Now, back to our meat. Ayan na siya. Lumabas na yung mga tumi ng karne. So, kailangan natin i-take out yung beef. So, you will need strainer para sa process na to. And then, once na nakuha na natin yung mga meat, we have to wash it with the running water para sure na sure na talagang malinis yung broth natin later. And hindi lang basta hugas ha, kailangan isa-isa talaga. While doing this, kailangan nagre-ready ka na ulit ng clean water sa isang pot. So there, we have to return the beef na hinugasan natin kanina. And then add more water para maraming sabaw. Now we have to put in the onion, the ginger, and later the spices. Ayan. So hayaan lang natin siyang kumulo for about an hour or two para malambot na malambot na talaga yung meat ng beef. Kung mas may time ka pa, mas maganda kung mga 3 to 4 hours mo siya pa kukuluan. But for this meat, mga 2 hours lang actually, pwede na siya eh. Don't forget to cover it, guys. Wow! Ayan! May pa-fireworks! Uh, by the way, base ako dito sa Dubai. And during the filming, Dubai Shopping Festival siya. So, every day, merong fireworks na ganap. Correction, hindi pala everyday, every weekends. Dati kasi everyday eh. So ayan, habang nagpapakulo, watch-watch muna ng fireworks. 
during my younger years, gusto gusto ko talaga nanonood ng fireworks and isa sa dream ko is makapanood ng fireworks sa Disneyland. So, when I had a chance na ma-witness ang fireworks ng Disneyland, hindi ko talaga mapikinan mapaiyak kahit matanda na ako nun. <laughs> And ang saya dahil dito sa bago naming bahay, may pa-view ng fireworks. Napaka-magical talagang panoodan ng fireworks. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung pinipigay niyang saya sa akin. Hindi ko rin ma-explain kung ano. But I am always in awe kapag nanonood ako ng fireworks. Sino sa inyo ang mahilig din manood ng fireworks like me? Please comment down below and share your experience or kung saan yung pinaka memorable na fireworks na napanood nyo. Nakiking about fireworks na yung video na to when in fact about fa naman talaga dapat. Sa bagay, pwede naman fa. Fa for fireworks. Charot! Last ko na yan. If you are doing this recipe while watching this video, don't worry. Just enjoy, relax, and have fun watching the fireworks kasi matagal pa bago lumambot ang meat ninyo. Imagine guys, since 17 December 2020 hanggang 30 January 2021, may pa fireworks every weekend. O ba Ang saya. So, kumusta naman kaya ang ating pinapakuluan? Ayan. Now, it's time to add some salt. For this recipe, I used Himalayan salt or actually any salt na bet ninyo kung ano available. Also add two and a half tablespoons of sugar. Also add patties or fish sauce. Actually, this is not my brand. Naubusan lang ako ng patties so I have to make nakaw. Charot! So, kailangan kong kumuha sa kapitbahay ng patties. Shout out pala sa kinuhanan ko ng patties. Thank you, Ate G and GE. Konting patis lang ha, kasi nanghingi lang ako eh. Charot! Actually, yung dami ng patis depende nga sa panlasa nyo. So, ako ayoko na masyadong maalat. Hindi naman kasi masarap yung parang humihigop ka na lang ng patis mamaya sa sobrang alat, ba? So, at this time, medyo malambot na yung beef. Sa tingin ko, medyo fork tender na siya. So, konting mga minutes na lang. Pwede na yan. See? Look how clear the soup is. Yan, ganyan talaga dapat. Kaya kung in-skip nyo yung process kanina ng paglinis ng beef, good luck. So, by this time, tatanggalin muna natin yung brisket part ng beef. The reason behind this is ayaw natin mas-stay pa ng mas matagal yung brisket part kasi titigas siya. Ang brisket part kasi, there's a tendency na kapag sumobra siya ng pakulo, nagiging matigas. So, yung bone marrow and the meaty beef ribs, yun yung iiwan natin na continuous pa rin yung pagpakulo. So, after a few minutes, pinatay ko na siya and I kept it overnight. Hindi na kailangan i-ref. Basta keep it overnight. The reason is, gusto ko yung fats niya, di ba, tumitigas. So, mas mataling tanggalin. Para at least, yung hinihigop nating sabaw, hindi na masebo, di ba? Okay, the day after or the night after, natanggal ko na yung mga tumigas na sebo. If you can see, on the upper right, yung green na mangkok, andun yung mga natanggal na sebo. Now, you will need a strainer and a pot para pakuluan uli yung mga spices and yung ginger, yung onion, and the buto-buto. The rest of the meat, itabi nyo muna. So there, yung right na pot, itong pot na yan, ayan yung pinagpakuluan ko last night. And then, nililipat ko ngayon yung mga spices nga, like what I've said, dito sa new pot. Kasi, kailangan pa natin siyang pakuluan ng mas matagal pa. Then, after that, we have to add additional boiled water. Siyempre, fa is all about sabaw. So, kailangan madaming sabaw. Don't worry, hindi magiging bland ito. Kasi, later on, magdadagdag tayo ng iba pang spices. So, after mga additional 30 minutes na pagpakulo ng soup with the spices and onion and ginger, 
i-strain mo na siya. Kaya kanina, sabi ko kailangan ng strainer. Kasi para mas madali na lang siya makuha. Then now, we will put back the meat. Yung beef meat na tinapin natin kanina. And then, pakukunaan natin siya ng mga another 10 to 15 minutes na lang. So, this is how the soaked noodles will look like. Di ba kanina parang transparent? Ngayon, white na siya na medyo malambot na. On another pot, napakulo kayo ng water and doon natin nilutuin yung noodles. This will not take too much time kasi nasoak na natin yung water. So, 5 minutes carry na yan. For the final touches, I'm adding a beef stock powder para sa soup. Boil for another 10 minutes, then you're good to go. Kinip ko lang siya dyan sa stove para magstay na mainit. While I'm preparing the pho. So, ayan. Okay na yung noodles natin. So, what we will do is, huhugasan natin siya sa running water. Cold water. And then, Put some oil para hindi siya magdikit-dikit. So, ayan. Okay na lahat. Ready na lahat. Now, all we need to do is assemble the pho. There. Yan ang setup natin sa pag-assemble. The soup. The noodles. Bean sprout. Chinis. Spring onion. Coriander. And the beef. Paano nga ba i-assemble ang pha? Actually, wala namang golden rule. Basta pagsamasamahin mo lang, okay na. Magtataka kayo, bakit hindi naluto yung bean sprout? Well, maluluto na siya sa init ng soup na inalagay natin. So, for me, ang una ko nilagay yung noodles, and then yung coriander, and then yung beef, and then, inalagay ko rin after nyan yung chilies, yung spring onion, and then the bean sprout. O, ba? Para ka lang nagshabu-shabu action eh. Pero, kasi ang pha, masyadong deep yung flavor niya. Na, very refreshing. Basta, masarap. Refreshing, pero pag maanghang talaga yung chili, good luck naman sa pawis, ba? I use the red bird chili para talagang todo-todo yung anghang. Pero, syempre, tinanggal ko yung seeds niya para huwag naman sobrang ooy na siya sa anghang. Tamang hot lang. So there, my version of pho. I hope you enjoyed this video kahit na mas mahaba siya sa usual airtime ko. Charot! <laughs> it may look complicated but I do hope you will try this recipe because I can assure you, sulit sa pagod. Now, it's time for me to enjoy this pho with Casa Era 308. Always remember, just cook it. And now, for my bonus video, here is my recipe of banana oats muffin. No sugar added. The ingredients are eggs, baking soda, vanilla, cinnamon powder. So, instead of sugar, I will use date syrup, bananas, whole wheat flour whole oats so ito yung klase ng banana na ginagamit ko for baking so ang advice ko if you are planning to bake anything na involving banana bumili kayo ng banana around 4 to 5 days prior you will also need extra virgin olive oil milk and salt this coconut sugar, gagamitin ko yan as toppings lang later. But it's optional. And also, you can mix in some of your favorite dried fruits or nuts. But for me, I will fold in later some peanut butter chips. Because banana and peanut butter goes well together. So, kinagagamitin ko. So, ayan na nga yung bananas ima mash lang natin siya you don't, you don't need a mixer for this fork lang pwede na ima mash lang natin siya together so, itong actual video ko ginawa ko siya ng actually for normal recipe which ilalagay ko sa description box below it will make around 12 muffins so ako gusto kong 24 muffins so double yung ginawa ko 
sa ingredients na nakalagay sa description box. Nagets nyo? Magulo. <laughs> Sorry. Basta, yung ilalagay ko sa description box, it will make 12 muffins. So, kung gusto nyo ng double, ng double the size of it, again 24, I mean, ito double nyo lang yung ingredients. Okay? So, ayan na nga. Mash-mash lang. Usually, for 12 muffins, kailangan ng 1 cup of mashed banana. Um, mga 3 bananas. Ganyan. Depende sa size ng banana. So, here, 3 bananas muna yung nilagay ko. Kasi supposed to be 12 muffins lang. Kaya lang, sabi ko, since gagawa na rin lang ako, gawin ko ng 24. Kasi, you can keep it um, in the freezer for up to 3 months. So, ito niya lang siya kung gusto niya na siyang kainin. And then, microwave lang for a few seconds. Ready na. Kaya, nilakihan ko na yung batch na ginawa ko. And syempre, free taste for my housemates. <laughs> housemates and office mates. <laughs> so, ayan na nga. After yan, nagdagdag pa ako ng free bananas. Para maging 2 cups yung banana. Ayan na siya. Ako, preferred ko, hindi ko talaga minamash yung buong banana. I mean, nagtitira ako ng konting lumps kasi feeling ko, nag help siya na maging moist yung banana. Now, on a separate bowl, maglalagay na tayo ng extra virgin olive oil. For 12 muffins, 1 third cup lang. Pero since 24 muffins gagawin ko, dalawang 1 third cup ang ilalagay. Next, on the same bowl, we will put date syrup. Half cup. But then again, like I said, 24 yung pieces yung ginagawa kong muffin. So, 1 cup ang ilalagay natin na date syrup. Date syrup is an is a healthier option than sugar. So, tinry ko lang tong date syrup since nasa Middle East ako and dates is like their national fruit. <laughs> so, take advantage of it. So, ayan nga. So, sim simutin natin yung measuring cup para walang sayang. I decided na ito yung una kong ituro sa inyo because this is so easy, as in super easy. Hindi mo kailangan ng electric mixer. You don't need um, a stand mixer. And one bowl, mixing bowl lang, carry na. So, ayun na nga. Mix together the extra virgin olive oil and the date syrup. Now, once you see this consistency, um, actually, makikita nyo talagang nagmix na yung, I mean, well blended na yung olive oil and the date syrup, idadagdag naman natin ang egg. Now, for egg, it is really advisable na ilagay nyo siya muna sa isang lalagyan and then transfer sa mixing bowl. Kasi, ang tendency, ayan, nakita nyo? <laughs> yung shell, pag nasama na doon sa ginagawa nating mixture, mahirap na siyang kunin. So, it is really advisable na break it sa isang lalagyan and then ilagay sa mixing bowl. And also, syempre, kapag minsan, unexpectedly, merong mga egg na um, yung sira. So, kapag na-mix mo yun directly doon or brinake mo directly doon sa mixing bowl, wala na. Sira na yung butter na ginagawa mo. ba? So, yun lang. Break it on a new bowl or a separate bowl and then add sa iyong mixing bowl. Okay? And then, mix lang only together. Yan. Mix lang ng mix. Okay, so rule of thumb yan ha. Kapag magbibake, ang egg, ibibreak sa ibang lalagyan bago ilagay sa mixture. Okay, now, ilalagay na natin yung ating mashed bananas. I will repeat, the full um, ingredients ilalagay ko sa description box below para ma-follow nyo. 
Okay, huwag kayong malilito sa ginagawa ko kasi like what I've said, two batch tong ginagawa ko. So, for 12 muffins, um, one cup of of mashed banana lang ang kailangan which is around three bananas. Okay, but for me, itong video, um, two cups of mashed bananas kasi nga, I'm making 24 muffins. So, ayan na nga, mix together until well combined and then yung remaining ingredients tuloy-tuloy na yon idadagdag na lang natin ng idadagdag now after adding or mixing the mashed bananas we will now add uh, one fourth cup of milk that is for 12 muffins but for 12 24 muffins which i am doing in this video dalawang one fourth cup ng fresh whole milk I prefer using whole milk kapag nagbe-bake kasi mas rich and um, creamier siya. Um, I will not recommend you using skimmed milk or low-fat milk kasi yung content ng fats niya iba. But maybe you can try. And if you will try, please comment down below kung okay naman yung outcome. After milk, we will add the baking soda vanilla extract salt and cinnamon powder I love cinnamon powder I mean I love cinnamon I love the smell of cinnamon so after adding those ingredients imimix lang natin siya but do not over mix okay now time to add our flour I am using whole wheat flour para mas healthy kami. <laughs> but you can use all-purpose flour. You can actually add in your flour directly dun sa mixture natin kanina. Hindi ko rin alam kung bakit hiniwalay ko pa na nalagyan. Dagdag hugasin. <laughs> so, ayun na nga. We will add the um, flour to our mixture. And then after ng flour, we will add the oats. After the oats, it's time for us to add the optional ingredients like the, for me, I'm adding um, peanut butter chips, raisins, and nuts sana kaso wala akong available nuts. But you can add in walnuts, ganyan, ichachop nyo lang. But for me, ito nga, peanut butter chips and raisins will do. So, kanina whisk yung gamit ko this time since ifo-fold lang natin yung add-in ingredients. I am using a spatula. So, mix them together na just enough na parang makover lang ng wet ingredients yung flour and um, oats. Again, do not over mix. Ang tawag dito sa procedure na to is cut and fold. Ika-cut sa middle and then ifo-fold lang natin siya carefully. Ayan, so cut and fold. Cut and fold. This time, we need to be patient, okay? So, wag madaliin. Carefully cut and fold your mixture. I just needed to speed up the video ng pag-cut and fold, guys, okay? Pero careful dapat. By this time, you should preheat your oven ng 170 degrees Celsius. It's my first time to bake in this oven, so um, ginawa ko muna siyang 175 degrees Celsius na preheat, and then later on, gagawin ko siyang 170 degrees kapag ka ilalagay ko na yung um, muffin. So, okay na yung butter natin. Now, it's time to prepare. I am using um, a wax paper or a baking paper para maging um, holder nung muffin. Hindi ako gumamit ng cupcake holder kasi parang mas malakas maka Starbucks yung ganyan yung style, de ba? <laughs> yung wax paper or baking paper yung gamit. Or, if you don't have a wax paper or a baking paper or a muffin holder or cupcake holder, pwede naman yung mismong baking tin mo um, mag-brush ka lang ng melted butter or cooking oil, ganyan. Para hindi dumikit yung muffin or yung binake mo doon sa baking tin. 
as you can see sa video, medyo struggling ako na i-form yung wax paper or yung baking paper ko. So, dahil sa kaartehan, instead na nag-muffin holder na lang ako or cupcake holder, ayan, panindigan natin. Now, um, using a cookie scooper or ito, ang gamit ko, two spoons. Yan, um, bali, dalawang tablespoons ang ninalagay ko. So, try natin sa ibang angle. Gantong angle naman. Akala mo ikinaganda. <laughs> so, ayan na nga. Ayan. So, nagawa na siya, finally. And then, on top of that, lalagyan natin siya ng konting whole oats sa ibabaw and coconut sugar kung gusto nyo naman. Kung ayaw nyo, okay lang na wag lagyan. Pero, I suggest na lagyan nyo ng konting coconut sugar sa ibabaw. And then, cinnamon powder. Ayan, konting tak, tak, tak. Ganyan. Huwag naman masyadong madami, guys. As in, parang Onti lang talaga, literal. Kasi kapag masyadong marami, baka mag-overpower na. And there are some people na hindi nila gusto yung cinnamon. But for me, like what I've said kanina, gusto ko yung cinnamon. So for me, okay lang na. Madami. Pero kung kayo gagawa and meron mga kakain sa inyo ng ayaw ng cinnamon, konti lang ilagay nyo. O, oh, diba? Look how pretty they are. Ayan na siya. So, ready na for baking. Ilalagay na natin siya sa oven. Um, ginawa ko na yung temperature niya to 170 degrees Celsius. And like what I've said na, first time kong gagamitin tong oven. So, medyo kakapain ko pa lang kung ilang minutes. But generally, it will be between 20 to 23 minutes. So, after 20 minutes... Iche-check ko na siya. Look how pretty yung dome. O, ba? Diba? Ayan. Insert the toothpick. Pag malinis na at hindi na basa yung toothpick, it means okay na siya. So, ito turn off ko na. Although, tinurn off ko na yung oven, iniwan ko pa rin siya doon for a few more minutes. Mga 2 to 3 minutes. Ganyan. Sayang kasi yung init. So, ayan na. Kukunin na natin siya. Yan. Careful lang ha. Kasi sobrang init talaga niyan. So, please don't forget to use pot holder. See, I told you, sobrang dali lang niyang gawin. So, I hope you guys can try this recipe. Alam niyo, marami akong kakilala. Confused sila kung ano ba ang muffin at, at ano ba ang cupcake. Well, ang muffin, ganito. Um, para siyang cupcake, but with dome. Dome means yung may umbok sa ibabaw. That's muffin. And ang cupcake naman is nilalagyan ng icing. Dapat flat yung cake and then saka mo siya lalagyan ng icing on top. Or any toppers. Yun ang cupcake. See how moist and fluffy and airy the muffin is? Uh, diba? Tapos yung mga peanut butter chips and the raisins. Mmm, yummy. Best paired with a cup of coffee or tea. Yan, may merienda na kayo or breakfast. So like what I've said, you can freeze this up to three months and thaw it a night before kung kailan nyo siya gustong kainin and then microwave for a few seconds. Then voila! You have a muffin. I really do hope you will try this recipe. And please comment down below kung nagustuhan ninyo. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank all my subscribers. Yay! 500 na tayo! So I hope yung mga hindi pa nakasubscribe, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. Always remember guys, just cook it. Until my next video, ta-ta!